Well, hello and welcome to this Visit USA members chat video. We're going to be talking all things Colorado, a state in the Western USA that's perhaps best known for its fabulous national parks, its world-class ski resorts and Denver, the Mile High City. But there's much more than that and here to tell us a little bit about what, I'm delighted to welcome Andrea Blankenship, who's Director of International Tourism at the Colorado Tourism Office. Hey hello. Andrea, how are you? Doing, doing fantastically. As you can see, I'm running through a meadow. I'm having a great time. Where are you speaking to us from today? I am in the city of Denver, Colorado, believe it or not. Although the picture behind me is the Great Sand Dunes National Park, which is one of our four national parks. And it's almost wildflower season here. So I had to represent. It looks stunning, it looks beautiful. Let's talk about Visit USA and your, your membership of the organization. Uh, when, when did Colorado join the association? You know, the interesting thing is we don't know. So we know we've been members for at least 10 years, but our membership in Visit USA predates any of us who are now around. So we, had, we went back and asked the question, we know at least 10 years. Well, you're certainly pretty active uh, uh, members of the association. And I know that you participate in, in plenty of their annual events. Uh, what, what do you think, what do you think is important at this particular time to be, to be part of an organization that's, that's promoting the USA? It's the collective voice, honestly. Um, there's no organization like Visit the USA that represents travel agents, that understands the USA, that can give advice on how to sell it. I mean, there is no other organization like it, and it's a huge, valuable part of our sales efforts in the UK. What, what does Director of International Tourism involve? What, what's your main uh, role and responsibilities there? No, I, I work on behalf of the state of Colorado um, and manage our international program for the Colorado Tourism Office. So we work with groups of representatives overseas. We work with Black Diamond in the UK and Ireland, who are absolutely amazing, and we absolutely love working with them. Uh, but of course, they represent Colorado to the UK public. Um, we work in five other markets full time. Um, so we have contractors or market managers who manage representatives. Um, and it's just, it's about promoting inbound international tourism to Colorado and as a result of that also to the US. And you've been pretty active uh, during this lockdown. I've seen you, you've been doing a few webinars uh, with particular yeah. trade. I saw you did one in Ireland, uh, I think last week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, well, we had the Irish members on it. Um, some of our favorites, I will add that. Um, but we did it for all of the UK and Black Diamond has a great new platform called Mogul um, for agent trainings. And we got great feedback. It was, it's just great to hear what people are interested in, be able to answer those questions, get in front of agents and you know, help, help sell for the future. Okay, and tell me about yourself. Was there one experience or moment or place that you went to that sort of was a flash of light and you said, yes, I must, I've got to work in tourism from this point onwards. <laughs> well, I hate to say it probably goes all the way back to, to when I was 10 years old. And I think there's just something in some of us that we just know we love to travel. Um, I started working for the airlines when I came out of the university. It, again, just fueling the love, especially of global travel, learning of other cultures. Um, and from the airlines came to tourism. And I just... I love it. You know, we, we create happy experiences for people. There's nothing like it. No. How long have you uh, been in Colorado? Are you, are you a native of Colorado? I am not a native. And my claim to fame is that I've moved here three times. Um, I came here first when I was young, just because it's Colorado. And a lot of people want to come here and move here. I hate to say that was back in the early 90s, not to date myself. Um, when I was with the airlines, I came back for five years. And then I've been here now since 2007, um, with work with another airline and then joined the tourism office in 2016. Tell us what's special about Colorado to you. I mentioned some of the, some of the things that we might know about Colorado in the UK, but what else, what did I miss there? I'd imagine that it's a four season state, uh, great for families. And I certainly know you have a lot of sunshine out there, but, but, but what else? It's about the people, you really and truly. So we have a great, welcoming western culture you know we're, we're built really on pioneering so the people are friendly they're very forthright thinking 
But of course, from a tourism perspective, our tourists are going to get a great friendly experience. They're going to experience the 300 days of sunshine. If you're here for a week, I guarantee you're going to get at least five days of sunshine. But yeah, it's, it's the four national parks. It's the mountains that you see behind me. It's also the urban and artsy experience. It's just a great place for all experiences. It can be luxurious. It can be casual. This state can literally be anything. Has, uh, has summer kicked in yet over there? It's starting to. It's starting to. So we had a couple of slightly rainy days, which is great because it creates those wildflowers behind me. Uh, but next week, we're already looking at temperatures of 30, 35 degrees. Great. So it's going to warm up quickly. And if you had to give some advice for travel agents, uh, in terms of how Colorado fits into a Western USA touring itinerary, what would you, what would you tell them? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, start in Denver. Um, we're really lucky that we have um, two year-round services on British Airways and United Airlines directly from London uh, to Denver. Of course, if you're in the northern part of the UK, Scotland or Ireland, uh, easy access also via Iceland Air. A Norwegian, we have seasonal service, although I believe they won't resume that until 2021 or 2022. But it's easy to get to Denver and from here, fly drives are the best way. Um, get in a car, I would recommend spend a couple nights in Denver. In fact, don't get in a car right away. It's a completely walkable city. There's a train that comes from downtown. And from here, you have great access, not only to all the points in Colorado, which of course I'm here to sell, but it's an easy trip if you head north to Wyoming. Um, you can swing around, uh, do Utah, um, experience some of that, you know, or take the Southern route. We have a lot of people who follow the Colorado River, which of course starts in Colorado, up near a beautiful town called Steamboat Springs. And they literally follow the Colorado River all the way to the Grand Canyon, which is another great idea, going through Colorado, Utah, and all the way down to Arizona. Yeah. And I know Colorado's got a few quirky facts too, like the fact that it has over, I think, 1,500 ghost towns worth visiting. Uh, I think you told me that in a previous conversation we had. So yes. What are these? Where are they? And how does the visitor find them? <laughs> well, it's actually really easy to stumble upon them. In fact, there's a hike that I do fairly frequently, that there's the foundations of an old town there, an old mining town. So these ghost towns originally started as mining towns. Colorado was part of the gold rush, of course, in the 1800s. Um, the biggest and most well-preserved one is in St. Elmo, which is in the center of a state in, in a county. We break our state up into counties called Chafee County. So Salida, Buena Vista are near there, which is a great area to see ghost towns. There's great hot springs there at uh, Mount Princeton Hot Springs. It's a great natural area for all sorts of activities and the whitewater rafting in that area is fantastic. We're about one month away from great whitewater rafting. So we're getting a little anxious to get out there again. I know you have some pretty extreme rafting, but you, you have rafting for beginners too, don't you? Absolutely, yeah. 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 And, and that's really what Colorado is all about. There's experiences for beginners or easy hikes. And then, of course, there's the extreme if you want to cliff camp or do um, level five waters in rafting. Okay. Let's talk about some of your current campaigns and themes. I saw something about Ready, Set, Co campaign. Well, what is that? Well, Ready, Ready, Set Colorado is what we will call it. So really what we're doing, like every other destination throughout the world is doing, is waiting for the right time for us to start talking about bringing tourists back into our state. Um, we're getting our destinations ready on the one hand, talking about the guidelines that they need to make tourists feel safe while they're here, and also to keep our residents safe, which is a really important part of the equation these days. Um, but the Ready, Set, Co, right now we're in the waiting phase, just waiting until A, international tourists can come in without having to be quarantined for 14 days. Um, but we're, we're just waiting, we're preparing when we're ready, then we'll start just soft promotion, um, talking about the things that you can do in Colorado. We've had a great social campaign called hashtag Colorado Calm, if you want to look it up, where you get to see little video bits of things that are happening in Colorado. We're not trying to sell it. We're just trying to remind people that we're still here and we're eager to welcome tourists back. We're waiting till everybody's ready. Are you talking to UK tour operators at the moment or are you waiting until mm -hmm. we're through this, this current period? Oh, we're definitely talking to them. So um, Black Diamond is in regular contact with tour operators. Of course, we just hosted a webinar last week. Um, we're talking about some other future webinars so that we can talk to travel agents more, tell them a little bit more about Colorado, 
explain some of the, the best sales points, but Black Diamond's an excellent point of contact and always willing to help tour operators sell Colorado. Tour operators really, they are one of the main keys uh, on the road to recovery. We know a lot of people have postponed trips and we hope that they bring them back. Uh, maybe the end of this year uh, in 2021 and tour operators really are absolutely key to that. You have the best knowledge of what Colorado is. Many of you have experienced it and there is no better way to talk about Colorado and make travelers feel comfortable. I know that Colorado has a strong sustainability ethos uh, and I guess when you've got those fabulous open spaces and those that kind of wondrous scenery you need to you need to protect that but just just tell me what the term sustainable tourism and sustainable tourism experiences mean when we're talking in a Colorado context. Really in a Colorado context, we would like our visitors when they come here to treat Colorado as we treat Colorado. You know, as you mentioned, we have these fantastic natural resources and it's important to all of us and it's also important to future generations that we take care of it. You know, for us, it's you know, as simple as staying on the path when you're hiking, picking up your garbage, we call it pack in, pack out. Anything you bring in with you comes back out and we need to take care of this environment or it won't be here in the future. I think Colorado's got 26 scenic flyways uh, mm -hmm. and you are looking currently at putting in charging stations there and working with the car rental yeah. companies to, uh, to encourage the use of electric cars. And we're really excited about that. So we're hoping by the end of this year that we'll have five of our 26 scenic byways electrified. So there will be uh, stops for electric vehicles. We're working with a car rental company called Enterprise, which you may be familiar with, Enterprise Rent a Car, so that they also, and we'll be working with other car rental companies as well, so that they have fleets of electric cars, so that when tourists come in, they can rent an electric car, they know that they can get through the state, Many of our small mountain towns as well, they have electric charging stations, no matter how small the town. That's how important it is to Coloradans to keep the environment as good as we can. We hope to have the other 21 electrified. Our target date was the end of 2021. Again, given the current circumstances, we hope that we stay on target with that. Another one of your, I think your new campaigns is the Leave No Trace campaign. Uh, tell us mm -hmm. how visitors can contribute to that. Tell us what that is and, and, and how visitors can yeah. take part. This is one of the things we get the most excited about. So we call it Care for Colorado. And if you're curious, there's a an awesome but fairly annoying video <laughs> that goes with it. If you go to colorado.com backslash care for Colorado, um, you'll find it right in the middle is the video where we have animated animals talking about the things, the seven principles that Colorado has for uh, tourism, tourists to be sustainable when they come here. And again, it's all about not starting a forest fire, um, taking care of yourself, picking things up, staying on the trail, just all of the basic, which most of us would consider to be common sense when you go somewhere. It's the seven care for Colorado polls that, that uh, visitors should do when they come to Colorado. Also just how to dress right. Uh, one thing that people don't realize about Colorado is our weather can change rapidly. Um, because we're a high desert climate, it can be really cold at night, but really hot during the day. So we're all about layers. Now, if I ask you your favorite season, I know you're going to tell me that you like them all, but do you, do you have a slight preference for one? Well, I'm supposed to say all, but no, I will tell you, September and October are absolutely my favorite months here. So in the mountains, when the trees start to change, they start in the northern part of the state, they work their way south, and then they move to Denver. So we literally have about a six week fall season. Um, when the aspens have changed in the mountains, which our um, aspen trees are very indigenous in our mountain areas, the yellow against the backdrop of the mountains, sometimes with the little snow capped peaks, bright blue skies, it's, there's literally nothing like it. it. September, October, fall is my favorite season. And those fabulous ski resorts I, remember, I mentioned earlier, such as yeah. well, Aspen, Breckenridge, they're, they're, they're geared up for summer too, aren't they? There's plenty of things to do there. In the well, they are, and that's, and that's what a lot of people don't realize is our, many of our mountain resorts, they might be winter playgrounds, but they also have created adventure parks. So they have adventure parks at the top of their mountains in the summer. Um, you can ride the lift up and mountain bike down or hike down. Um, they really are, we do have an expression, uh, come for winter, stay for summer. 
Uh, there's just, there's so much to do at any time of year. In fact, you don't even have to be a skier to come to Colorado in the winter. There's so many other things to do from sleigh riding, sledding, cross country skiing, um, snowmobiling. There is always something to do at any season in Colorado. I think you've told us enough to pique the interests of uh, agents and anyone else. <laughs> by watching the so. video. And if, if that backdrop doesn't do it, nothing will too. Uh, but for anyone else, particularly our readers, our travel agents that are interested in hearing more about Colorado or are there digital tools or virtual tools or destination videos that are available for them, particularly at this Always. time now? Always. And, you know, I hate to say really your best tool is going to be Colorado.com. I know everybody's surfing websites. I hate to keep sending people there. Uh, but there are not only virtual tours, I do also want to mention Denver, since we've talked about it. Uh, Denver has a host of virtual tours for art museums. There's a lot of cooking classes that um, are, have actually gone virtual for Colorado, and you can find all of that on our website. Um, but like I said, check out our social media as well, the hashtag Colorado Calm. Um, we've been doing a lot of things so that people can experience Colorado, even though they can't physically visit here. Okay. All right, and finally, when, when we're through this, this, this current phase, yes. what's the first place you're going to be going to? Ah, uh, that's like, I knew you were going to ask this question. It's like Sophie's Choice. <laughs> but I will say, I, I have a second home um, in a small mountain community about an hour west of Denver called Frisco. Um, it's kind of equidistant between Breckenridge and Vail as the roads go. Um, I cannot wait to get back up there. It will be... One of my favorite seasons, which I have four favorite seasons, of course, Steve. <laughs> but when, when summer starts to hit the mountains and the flowers that you see behind me are blooming and it's just absolutely spectacular. And I really, truly, I can't wait to get back up there. Okay. Well, hopefully that'll be soon. Uh, thanks for joining us today, Andrea. And we look forward to seeing you either on this side of the Atlantic or, or in your part of the world. Excellent. Well, thank you for the invitation. Happy to speak to you today. Good to see yeah. you again. Bye-bye.